I think I found a spot. Look at this landscape, it's super nice. The thing is that it's ice under this, and I don't wanna go through it. So I think I, I hold here. This can be cool. Yeah, let's uh, put up the, the tripod and the camera and everything. Today we're going to talk about a budget lens. That's because someone made a comment on my previous episode about, well, you don't need to buy that 24-7-70 Sony lens, which is good. There are like cheaper ones that are as good. Well, as good, we can discuss that, but well, good enough. It's, it's probably a better word for it because, you know, price range makes also some kind of difference. But if you buy a lens, in this case, the Sigma, for 800 euros compared to a 3000 euro lens, there will be differences. But before we go any further, I will say I'm not sponsored and I'm recording this in daytime, which means I live in a ghetto where we're gonna hear helicopters hovering around. Yeah, like now. And also cars with big ass stereos bumping it outside. But well, I guess that's the spice of the show. So let's, let's go, let's, yeah, let's do this. Here we are in my outdoor studio, which is super cold today. It's, I mean, the wind is killing it, even the polar bears are inside. So here we are up for a test of 2870 against 2470 from Sony. And yeah, Sigma versus Sony. Let's see what it's all about. So this is how I do it. I put it on a tripod and switch the lenses. See, it's kind of nice landscape. But I don't think the, the pictures will be any like piece of art. Now I'm inside because it's much warmer. Uh, thinking of taking a pictures of my my art studio. So I have the colors lined up here. Take some close-ups on that, and you know, shooting through stuff, shoot the painting that I'm making there, and uh, see how it ends up. So yeah, let's wait for the result. Here is the masterpieces I got from outside. Well. It's not not so so awesome, but I hope you get get a, like a point of the quality that the Sigma delivers. And could you really see the differences between the Sony and the Sigma? I guess not. But how does the Sigma looks like? Like this. This is the Sigma lens. Look how small it is. It's so small. It's so so tiny compared to this beast I got here, the Sony beast super heavy this one is so light and why is it so light yeah glass is class that's what i used to say the more glasses you have inside the lens the better it is so this one is much better having more glasses inside it and it's also 2470 this one is a 2870 so why is that leon well basically i think what sigma did was moving up to 28 because it's much cheaper to make a lens 28 than a 24 Basically to keep it sharp. And if you're gonna go wide, wide, you need more glasses. That's why this one have more glasses, basically. But also high quality glasses. This one have like cheaper glasses. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, could you see that, I mean, those cheap glasses working that is so different between the more expensive one? Guess not. The Sony is much more sharper. And how can you say that? How can you say that it's sharper? Well, just look at the background the bokeh, the unsharpness. You you need to measure the sharpness in unsharpness, how stupid it may sound like. But the more edgy your sharpness is on the background, the unsharpness on the background, the more unsharp your lens is. The rounder it is, the bokeh, the sharper the lens is. So high quality lenses have more round unsharpness, while the cheaper ones have more edgy ones. Like a Nintendo 8-bit, you know. Remember Mario Bros? Kind of edginess from the 80s. You pay what you get for. If you pay 3000 euros, you get a super sharp lens for sure. If you pay 800 euros, you get less sharp lens. But you can't really tell that it's so unsharp. So what does this lens makes it so good compared to this one that have everything you need? 
First of all, let's start with the autofocus. The autofocus on this one is super fast, mainly because it's less lenses inside or glasses. Much less movement and it goes much faster. When you need to take a picture of that biker coming down super fast, you need to like nail the autofocus like boom. You do it with this one. But it's also super light and you also like to go light when you go biking. You don't like to pack up like heavy stuff in your backpack. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a case of, you know, your safetyness as well. I mean, don't load your camera bag too much when you go out biking. I mean, I come from a school when you used to have this DSLR Nikon D4S with full mount kit on. I mean, it's eight kilos. That's, that's ridiculous. The camera bag itself weighed like 80 kilos to bike up hills with and you were tired when you came up and when you're going down, it's kind of, you know, it's not fun. No, it, it was not fun, carry all that stuff. With today's late white lenses, the difference, it gives you possibilities that is like never ending. Having a camera that is much more easy to carry with you will probably make you take better photos. So having a ridiculous heavy lens at home will not make you take any photos at all, even if the quality on this one is better, but if you don't use it, it doesn't make sense. You will use the lighter one because it's much easier to carry with you. That's also the reason of why I use the iPhone all the time. I take like 80% of my photos with my iPhone because it's so easy to have in your pocket. You take it out and you like you have like a media center, you can film, you, can, yeah, you know, you know, deal with the iPhone, right? It's good. It's good because you can carry it with you. So what can you do with this lens? It's super light. It's have everything you can wish for. Autofocus is fast. No stabilizer, but hey, that's not the problem. You have that in your house. In your Sony house, you have the stabilizer as well. So that's not an issue at all. But there is one downside with this one. It's not the cover. But it's this. The outside mounting of the zoom. You have that on the, on the Sony as well. It's also on the outside. This is so ridiculous. Why do you make some lenses like that nowadays? It should be inside. The inside routing should be like legit. Because if you, for example, taking pictures of a motocross rider, there's lots of dirt going on. You don't want to have that dust inside your lens, do you? And it's not like the big dust bits that are the problem. It's the smallest of the smallest one that crawls inside here. They do. It's, it's dust sealed, they say, but to a point. To a certain point, it will crawl inside your lens and cause lots of troubles. And you need to send it in and it costs you dollars. So, yeah, I know. It's kind of shitty trend. Well, it's kind of shitty trend um, that is happening today with the lenses, probably because they want to sell more lenses. I mean, I remember the days when you bought like a lens for 2000 euros or something, you keep it whole life. Not, I'm not dead, but you can keep it the whole life because it's still working. I still have lenses from the 90s that work. What more do you need? A easy carry lens and nice housing and you go out there and nail your pictures. It's, that's what you all like to do, right? I can recommend this lens. I'm not sponsored. Just speaking straight out from my heart, straight into yours. So you don't get broke when you're buying the wrong stuff. So yeah, I recommend this one. Go out and try it. You will buy it. But if you have lots of money, buy this one. It's a super tank. It can do everything. I can throw it into the wall. But, I mean, this is a great, great lens. I'm not granting it at, at all. This is like the Jedi lens. You can do, do things with it that you can't do with this one. Like, and train with it, like a kettlebell something. That's it from me, guys. Subscribe and like if you enjoy this channel. Uh, I will bring up more stuff twice a week, actually. And you can also jump into my Instagram and yeah, watch my funny videos that I post there all the time. See you later. Cheers. Ciao. Arrivederci. And all that jazz. I'm Leon and out.